Let's look at cross-site scripting next. I love this vulnerability category because it is very complicated. It's one of the more difficult areas of application security for a web developer to get right. And we have all these promises to fix this. HTTP only, output encoding, uh, uh, automatic output encoding templates, HTML sanitization, content security policy, um, trusted types. There's been so many attempts to fix cross-site scripting. Is it fixed yet? Not at all. It's, it shows up everywhere. So cross-site scripting was first coined as the term. Sir, you're late. You're late for my talk. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right. 1999, we see Microsoft engineers coin the term cross-site scripting, right? And 2002, we see Microsoft releasing the HTTP-only flag in Internet Explorer 6 Service Pack 1. Internet Explorer 6, just saying that word makes me feel physical pain, just for the record. Wow. Let me just, let's move we're moving on. And so 2005, Sammy Kumkar from Los Angeles decides to submit this little payload against MySpace, executing the first global cross-site scripting worm in history. This caused the entire MySpace global cluster to blue screen and shut down. And Sammy spent a couple years sweeping like streets in LA in a jumpsuit you know, to avoid going to jail. But he demonstrated to us that cross-site scripting is real and the damage that can be done with it is real. And this really accelerated the whole security industry. I remember people looking at this in our industry going, I can't believe Sammy did that against MySpace. That is a terrible criminal act. Yes, we're so, because even though it was a criminal act, that harmed MySpace, it bred awareness about application security like nothing else in that era of time. All of a sudden, I got calls and budget and people want to do security. So Sammy, doing evil, helped the world be a more secure place. My kind of guy. Let's keep going. So 2005, Amit Klein first publishes an article about DOM-based XSS. This article is completely incorrect when we look at it today, but at the time, it was, it was good analysis. Let me jump ahead a bit. What else? So two th 2012 is a big, important part of history. This is where Content Security Policy 1.0 is published. This is an a, a, even more important standard as time goes on, because we're realizing, even with our frameworks, and, and Philip, no one likes Angular, I'm sorry. It, with, with the other non-Angular frameworks, we don't get free security. So, to, so and, and developers who really understand using these frameworks securely is unfortunately rare. So content security policy is this extra layer I can add on top of a web app to really lock down the browser in a variety of different ways. And here we have CSP2 published in 2014, CSP3 published in 2015, and trusted type shows up in 2020. Now, what's the problem in 2020? Every single browser is supporting Content Security Policy 3, except for one browser, Safari. It is really frustrating. They did roll it out recently, but as you may guess, there's a story behind that. So here we go, August of 2021. I'm tweeting, I believe that Safari's lack of CS3 support and similar W3 standards is a reason to boycott and stop using it, out to 20,000 followers. I now see Safari as a browser that impedes the secure web. Edge, Chrome, Firefox, all support CSP3, but why not Safari? So I'm being a jerk. And I'm, well, I'm open to counter opinions. That's saying I know I'm being a jerk and I'm trying to like, excuse myself. So anyways, all of a sudden, Dr. Philippe shows up because people are saying Safari's not important. And Philippe jumps in and says, well, that holds for a lot of people, but the market share is not insignificant, folks. I use Brave, but Safari is 8%. And this is important. Come on, Philip. <laughs> Selfies with friends. Of course. Let's do this. Right on, Philip. <laughs> Won't the audience? Won't the audience? Come on. Come Get on. down. Come on! Hey. Woo! Thank you, man. Philip is one of my favorite instructors in the world of OAuth 2 and OpenID Connect. Wh who was at breakfast with us? Uh, well, Ander. Anders? He said he wouldn't go to my talk, so he's not here. Ander, 
Philip is an instructor in the world of OAuth 2 and OIDC. I'm a big fan, Philip. So here we go. I'm August of 2021. I'm not trying to harass John. By the way, the head of, of Safari security is John Wylander, and he's a, he's a Swedish man. You know what they say about the Swedes? They're great people, right? So let's, let's, let's move on. So John, John, John is Swedish, and he runs the whole security team for Safari. And I'm like really attacking John, but trying not to. And John's like, he's a man of respect. He really is. He's like, Jim, don't worry. I want to see CSP3 in WebKit as well. And always forward good faith feedback to the team. If you want to talk to the person in charge, he's blah. Now, guess what? The next tweet is Lucas Weichelbaum. Do you know who Lucas is, by the way? Here's Lucas. Lucas is a senior staff information security engineer at Google out of Zurich. Let's be clear. He's one of the most senior content security policy engineers at Google. So Apple is like, yeah, we haven't built it yet. We're thinking about it. I'm going to forward this to our lead. And Google says, hey, we'll do it for you, Apple. And I'm like, Oh my God, drama, I'm so excited. This is all under the thread where I'm bitching at Safari, right? Go Lucas. John's like, absolutely. WebKit's open source. It's not just Apple building web platform. Yeah, it's pretty much only for Apple. Sorry, John. So uh, we haven't expressed opposition to CSP money. It isn't backwards compatible. It's too complex. So John's like, he's not drinking the Kool-Aid of content security policy. Who believes in content security policy? All right, there's enough. So it's okay, John. John hasn't quite drank the Kool-Aid. So Lucas is like, he's being really respectful. Thank you. Was opposition about strict dynamic, one of the most important flags in content security policy? We think it makes deployment easier. So he knows just what to say to John. And John's like, well, we want to split up CSP. We want to fork it off. We don't want, we don't want to do it. That's okay, John. I, and Lucas, I get it. I also agree it would make sense to fork off script, scripting. Let me go talk to some folks, and I'll, come, I'll get back to you. And all of a sudden, and this all goes away. Behind the scenes, I'm getting texts from John, getting texts from Lucas, getting texts from Michelle Spagnuolo, and everyone's talking behind the scenes. And I want to respect their privacy and not get into it. But let's jump ahead like five minutes later, or five months later. All of a sudden, I, I, I get a note from John that Kate Cheney from Apple is implementing content security policy three. Not because Google hired a bunch of engineers to start working on it, and they did. And for some reason, Apple was not happy that Google engineers were donating their time and money to help WebKit implement content security policy three so Safari could get better, better security. And whatever, for whatever reason, Apple executives were like, no. This is not going to happen. So they assign Kate Cheney, who's awesome, to do CSP3, and she begins working on it. And suddenly, I get this from John just a couple weeks ago. Hey, Jim, WebKit and Safari 15.4 approved support for content security policy level three, new support for strict dynamic, unsafe hashes, report sample. Happy to deliver this message, my friend. John is one of the best people in our industry I've ever met. He is just 100% good people. I am this, and this made me, I couldn't believe this happened. It's John, this makes me beam with joy. Thank you and your team for their hard work in delivering this critical security standard, security standard to Safari. What's the moral of the story here? Be a jerk on Twitter. But do it for the right reason, right? And don't be too much of a jerk on Twitter. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. So you can be a jerk on Twitter and make the world a more secure place. This is not about me, though. This is about this team here. This is John Wylander, the head of Safari Security. This is Kath. I'm respecting her privacy. Catherine Cheney, who's the engineer who built CSP into Safari. And my personal heroes from Google. Yes, thank you, boys. Lukas Weichelbaum and Michelle Spagnolo, the two gentlemen who rolled out content security policy in the real world more than any two people in the any two people in the world. So let's recap all of this. Let's go back. Let's go back a step. Let's look at the history of content security policy. In '99, Microsoft defines the term. It is everywhere in every app 
And the web is a very fragile place in this era. Blink ahead to today, just a couple weeks ago, we have one of the most modern, progressive, easy to deploy standards in the world available in every major browser with, with the most advanced standards so it's easy to roll out. So what's the point? You look at the problem of fixing XSS as a developer, as a security person, it's brutally difficult to handle. But if you zoom out and look at where we, how far we've come, the advancements in only 20 years is amazingly dramatic. And we have the tools and ability to solve this problem today more than ever before. We still have a lot of work to do. We're still rolling out trusted types, an even newer standard that, that we see being woven into frameworks today. So what do we got? Auto-escaping to stop cross-site scripting is the norm in all major frameworks. Vue, React, Angular, Svelte, they all do it. CSP3 with strict dynamic just from a few weeks ago is live in every major browser. Trusted types is available in many frameworks. And being a little bit of a jerk on Twitter can help make the world a more secure place. All right, I'm winding down here. Let, let, me, let me jump ahead a bit, pardon me. Let's come to a conclusion here. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna spend the whole hour. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wind it down. We look at today and application security chapters for the OWASP Foundation is 260 locations around the world, from Hawaii to, uh, the, the, for, to Nepal, and Kathmandu has a chapter. So the, the people I know in OWASP around the world that I collaborate with and communicate with and give talks to, because of OWASP, I, I have friends in the security industry in almost every corner of the planet. And that is a gift to my life. So when I, when I think about OWASP, I give this talk to you, I tell you these jokes and stories, what really goes through my mind is OWASP has been the greatest gift to my life in terms of teaching me about application security, giving me chances to travel the world and speak, and most importantly, to collaborate with brilliant people like Scott and Pear and Philippe and the rest of you here. So here's one last moment in application security history that I want to bring up, and that's today, NDC Security. Here in Norway, a giant security conference dedicated to application security. This is important that we're here, that you care about security enough to show up here. Let's talk about the future of AppSec for a second as we finish this talk up. So I don't know what the future has to bring. It's not about me. It's not about an idea. It's not even about a technology or a concept or, or some brilliant thing I can think about, you know what the future of AppSec really is? The future of AppSec is you. It's everyone in this room who shows up to this conference, who cares about security, who fights the fight, and tries to make the world a more secure place in some way. The future of application security is you. Thank you very much.